Hello everybody, happy Friday. Welcome back to Read and Reread. I hope it's still Friday when I put this video out because I've started it over about 10 times. Something just keeps um, interrupting me or distracting me or camera's funny and stuff like that. But okay, finally, hopefully this is it. Um, so <laughs> this uh, is Friday Reads and the monthly wrap up for August and also the beginning of my Shorty September little roundup where I'm going to read 30 short stories in 30 days all by different authors and that is my shorty September celebration. Before I get on to the books I want to talk about what we've been watching this week um, which I don't really have anything super exciting to report. We're still watching Reservation Dogs. I still highly recommend that show and um, we also are watching season four I think it is of Fargo. So each season is a completely different story, but sometimes there's a little bit of crossover or a reference to something from another one of the seasons. But this one takes place in 1950 in Kansas City. It has to do with rival gangs um, fighting over the turf, which to me is not super interesting. But some of the characters and... Um, uh, actors that are in this particular season I do like so in this one one rive one gang is the african-american gang and it's led by Chris Rock in a um, what do you call a dramatic role and he, I mean he's good he's not like super his character is not super interesting but he's he's in there and he got a lot of billing but he's it's very much an ensemble story and he's not really more of a main character than some of the other people to me, the scene stealer is Jesse Buckley as a super weird nurse. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Also, um, I guess that's it. We're, we just have been watching those two shows, I think. We finished Sandman. And, you know, my problem with Sandman was that the main character, Morpheus, who's supposed to be the central figure of the whole thing, he's just kind of a drag. He's... He's morose, he has like no expressions, he has no humor, and you know, I think the show should be called Everybody Hates Morpheus, because he just pretty much makes everybody mad in the whole show the whole time. It had a cool episode at the end that was like a departure, where it was an animated episode about um, kind of a folk tale about cats that was sort of different, and I guess that that is from the Sandman graphic novel universe or a Neil Gaiman story. Um, but so it was, um, it wasn't terrible, but we didn't love it either. And also it was kind of like, it didn't know what it wanted to be because it was kind of, um, very traditional fantasy at some points in um, kind of hokey almost. And then other times it was so dark and it had like super dark humor that actually, I mean, I like it dark, but it crossed the line. Like where you're like, that, that just really isn't funny. Like. Ew, ew. So anyway, I don't know. It was, I don't, I'm not really interested in following it if they do season two. But, you know, if you're a big fan of the graphic novels, you might be excited about it. All right, moving on to the books. In August, it seems like it, this month started a lot longer ago than 30 days ago because, or 31, because so much has happened. You know, we moved, we sold a house, bought a house, we moved. We've had this enormous plumbing project was just ended today. How many videos have I talked about the plumbing project? So it's finally done. It took almost two weeks. Um, so, but it should be smoother sailing from this point on. But anyway, so when I go back to the beginning of this month, I'm thinking, I feel like I read this book like six or eight months ago. So I started the month with Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder, which is a mystery with fantasy elements that takes place in London in the post-World War II era. And it's about a secret society of private investigators that do sort of have some magical sort of equipment. And they have a hidden um, labyrinth of offices and dwellings and things that are sort of behind and below a used bookstore in London. And Marion is an apprentice with this group and she solves a murder. Um, I liked it. It was it was fun. It was pretty light, and I, when I'm in that mood, I will seek out book number two. Then I read B is for Betsy, which was my very first chapter book that I ever selected when I was in first grade, and it is about a girl in first grade. 
And this book was vintage when I read it. I mean, look at the, look at the it's got a very Dick and Jane look to the illustrations. Um, I think it was written in the 40s, and I probably picked it out in the 70s. So it was already old then, and um, I don't know. It's just it's just a little slice of personal history, and I had fun reading that again to celebrate the school year starting, even though I wasn't starting the school year for the first time ever in my life because I retired. All right, the next one was Ann Patchett. Patron Saint of Liars. I've read a lot of Ann Patchett books, and I've loved a lot of Ann Patchett books, but I had never read her first book. It was really good. Um, wasn't my favorite of her books, which, you know, it's kind of how it goes. You, the writer usually grows and develops, but it was really good. I just that the central character that tied everyone together was um, highly unlikable. All the side characters around her that were mesmerized by her and loved her, I liked and were very interesting people, but Rose, the central character, was really difficult. So that made it hard to engage, but it was a really good story. But there's so many unanswered questions about, and usually if somebody is really tough in a story, you get some insight along the way about why. Why, why are they like that? And you never really got that. There was no real reason for why she was the way she was, but there she was. So that one was there. If I look like I'm moving weird, I've had this major neck thing for a couple of days, so I'm kind of, I think I've had this before when I've been on these videos. I'm kind of like, Arr, Arr. Um, The next one, I, I think this is still at the old house. The Possessors by John Christopher. He wrote um, science fiction, some for adults, and then a lot for young adults. Wrote one of my favorite young adult trilogies, The White Mountains. This is sort of a body snatcher tale, and it's also a everybody is snowed in and stuck in a winter cabin tale. Um, and, and, and an alien life force is snatching bodies. It's weird, and it's very 1960s. And um, if you like weird vintage science fiction, you might get a kick out of that. Then I read You Think It, I'll Say It by Curtis Suttonfeld, which is a collection of short stories. And this was a kind of a mixed bag. There was a couple of really good ones and a lot that are not going to stick with me. And that's okay. They It didn't live up to the hype of... Uh, Ruman alum's recommendation, but it was okay. And I didn't pay much money for it, so that's all right. And then uh, the second to last, no, yeah, yeah, the second to last thing I read in August was the very best one that I read in August, and that is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Loved it. I talked about it last week in Friday Reads. Great book, beautiful um, not a not a uh, extra or misplaced word or a nothing to spare. Very small and perfect novella about Ireland in the 1980s, but with a feel of a time even farther past because of the smallness of the town that it takes place in, and about one man's struggle between the status quo and what he knows to be decent. So I just really loved this book, and I, I want to give out like 100 spoilers, but I won't do it. All right, then um, I think the final, the final one, and it also is the beginning of this week's Friday Reads, the last book of August, and one of the two books that I finished in this past week is Siren Queen by Nevo. I previously, earlier this year, read um, The Chosen and the Beautiful, which was a reinterpretation of The Great Gatsby with magical realism and a lot of queer themes. And in this book, she takes on pre-code Hollywood, um, also with an Asian main character who's trying to break in and wants to be a star. And um, again, she is an outsider. She is queer, she is strong, she is unusual, she says I, she wants to be a monster. She doesn't want to play the role of 
fainting ladies or ingenues or the maid that is in the background. She wants to be the star and she wants to be the villain. And so she sets out to do that. And if I, if I had not read the previous book, I don't know what I would have made of this because the way that she handles the magical elements is really, it's really strange and it like nothing's, there's no like world building or explaining. It's just sort of there and referred to and not explain very much. Things are just, things just happen or are there and you're just like, the what? You know? So there's a lot of things like that in there. Um, it, it's just, it's a strange, it's a strange book. I liked it. I didn't love it. I never fully connected there. It, the whole thing was like very um, attractive and compelling, but I didn't totally get into it. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I liked the previous book I read by her more. But um, I liked it enough that I'm, I'm still interested in following what she does next because she's a very interesting writer. All right, then the other one that I read this week. Oh, man, I got it. I'm stuck. Okay. Um, I read another Booker contender. Oh, gosh, the glare is terrible. Oh, William by Elizabeth Strout. Now, I have read the previous uh, Lucy Barton books. I read... Um, what were they? My name is Lucy Barton. Is that what it is? Um, and anything is possible. And I kind of have forgotten the details of those. Um, been a while since I read them, but she refers to those. Lucy narrates this book, and she does refer to the events in those other books in this book. And the character Lucy is a writer who has included some of the things that have happened in her life in her books. So sometimes when she meets people, they know things about her because she's like, why do you know that? And she, they're like, you wrote about it. So Lucy's an odd one. And at one point, her ex-husband William says that, Lucy, you're an odd one. And this book, and really all of her books, but thinking about this book and it being on the Booker long list, um, Elizabeth Strouts is her books are deceptively deep. They they don't usually run very long. And if you ask what they're about, it doesn't sound like much. And a, not a whole lot happens in the plot. But they are deeply emotional. And um, I don't know. There's just a lot of... They're very complex. In this particular book, to, to, the, the barest of summaries would be Lucy, Lucy's about 60-ish. Her ex-husband, William, is more like 70-ish. They've been divorced for a very long time. They have two adult daughters. Since the time that they were married, he has been married two more times, and she has been married one more time. Her husband, David, has recently passed away, and she is grieving. And William suffers a couple of bad surprises. Uh, I don't want to do a big spoiler on there, but um, a couple of things happen, and they are still, you know, being bound by the, the length of their marriage. I think they were married for like 20 years or something, and then they have these daughters, and um, th there's, a, there's a connection. They are, they are cordial. They talk to each other. A lot of times when something serious happens, they might call one another. And uh, William does call Lucy about these things that have happened. And he asks her if she will go with him on this trip to Maine because he wants to learn more about something that he found out, a startling fact about his family past. And she agrees to go on this trip with him. It's not well planned out. He doesn't really know what he's going to do, but he asks if she'll come along with him. Now there, I will give you this one spoiler. This is not a story about a broken up couple getting back together. That is not what happens. It is a story, I mean, the, the, the plot itself is about the trip to Maine and what they find out. But it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a, you know, and I usually don't like these kind of books, but it's kind of a meditative book of Lucy thinking about a lot of things. The things that are happening in the current are making her re-examine things from the past. Things about herself, 
her childhood and her adult behavior. It's making her think about William and the way that he acts and some of his perplexing characteristics and why they might be like that. It makes her think a lot about her mother-in-law who has who is no longer alive but that they have learned something about and that kind of casts some new light on her and the way that she behaved. But so it, it's part of this is about and it says late in the book like people are just mysteries and you never really know it all and part of it is that Lucy realizes that yourself is a mystery and you keep finding out things about yourself and you're, you're still trying to understand yourself in your 60s and in your 70s and so um, and also this other person that you've known for decades who you know you think you know them so intimately and then at other times you're just like who the you know <laughs> what so if, if you have, you know, if you are a person of a certain age, I think you'll appreciate the thoughts that Lucy has during the course of this book. And I also understand people who DNF'd it and they were like, I don't want to be with Lucy while she thinks through all this stuff. I get that too. But I actually, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and I will read the next one also. All right, so that brings me to my final portion today, and that is my shorty. September challenge. Pardon me while I rehydrate. Maybe I'll cut that out, maybe I won't. All right, so I decided to read 30 different short stories each day of September. No, no, not 30 on each day. One per day for 30 days by different authors. And trying to be diverse, going through classics, old favorites, new things, and so and kind of mixing it up up and down throughout the weeks of September so I began it's only been two days so far so um, I began with my favorite Flannery O'Connor story which really maybe is my favorite short story of of all but um, it is good country people if you have not read this story um, well I mean Flannery O'Connor is not for everybody but she is for me and I love this story more than anything and I have read the story a million times I first read it in a college English class a short fiction class because I was an English major and I um, it startled me we read uh, like a whole collection of her in that class and I was just startled and I fell in love and then I actually Stephen and I met over a conversation about Flannery Flannery O'Connor a number of years later so she binds us together as well and this particular story it's going to be hard to talk about the short stories without spoilers because you know they're short and you're going to give away you know what makes them so compelling but basically this story was written in 1955 and it takes place um, out at a kind of a country house where there is a woman and her adult daughter who is living back at home after um, having completed her education who has a PhD in philosophy and is just angry and depressed all the time and also there's a, a hired lady that works at the house as well and then along comes this Bible salesman and the encounter uh, between the, the Bible salesman and Joy who has changed her name to Holga who is the daughter character is indelibly marked in my soul and I every time I read it I I just I I don't just laugh I cackle and it I mean there's something super wrong with me because this is a dark and sinister not sinister cynical a dark and cynical story um, it makes me laugh out loud every time and I don't want to give everything away but the part that just really um, unravels me every time is when he opens up his his Bible briefcase in the hayloft and, and the contents just every time so if you have never read this story hustle yourself out and find it because it is a gem and if you think it's completely disturbed and you, it makes you wonder about me, then don't read any more Flannery O'Connor because it continues along in that vein. 
Anthony So, the author of After Parties, died at 28 of an accidental drug overdose. And so this book actually, he knew it was going to be published, but he did not live for the, you know, the, the launch. And so it was published posthumously. And apparently he was working on a novel at the time of his death. I don't know if how far along it was or if that's ever going to be put out. But um, according to his partner, that is the case. So this collection of stories uh, takes place in Stockton, California, in the Cambo Cambodian American community of Khmer people. And most of them um, are, they're kind of interconnected. There's even um, a character called Anthony, and they have a lot to do with the, the group of family and friends in this community. It looks at traditions, uh, clashes between traditional family members and younger people, their ambitions, their limitations, um, his identity as a gay man in a traditional family group and uh, there's the, the drug use is in the stories um, that eventually caught up to him tragically but um, so all that is in there it's they're very vibrant though it makes it even more sad because the stories are very vibrant and alive and the people are kind of young and striving but messed up and sometimes self-destructive but it's you know it's just kind of like full of potential and then you know that this is it but I read the first story again which actually um, is not as intertwined as the others although the the donut shop is referred to in some of the other stories but the story I reread was called three women of Chuck's Donuts and in this story there is a 24-hour donut shop and the woman who runs it has been recently um, stepped her husband has cut out on her because he had another family that she didn't know about so she's trying to keep this place afloat her two daughters are helping her in the summer and um, they are about 12 and 16 and a man starts coming in every well not every night but he comes in repeatedly he comes in in the middle of the night and he orders one apple fritter and then he just sits there. He doesn't eat it, he doesn't talk, and he sits there for a really long time and then he leaves. So the girls kids start making up all these stories about what what is his deal, why is he here. The mother starts worrying about something else that she thinks might be the reason why he's there. And um, some stuff happens, which I can't give away. But uh, it's, most of the story is about their speculation and about the, the one girl, the teenage girl, who's taking a community college summer class, a philosophy class called Knowing, and how she's trying to write a paper. And she's, she's thinking a lot about her Khmer identity and what does it mean. And when different people in her friends and family say, oh, you know, that's what they identify as the thing that makes you that way or what is your you know how and then that they could look at people and say well that person is Khmer and that person is not and she's like how can you tell I don't get it so she's thinking about those things and then they're just speculating on this man and then you know they do eventually find out kinda of what his deal is but I shall not give it away but really um, I just read that one again as a sample but of course when I'm starting this project to pick out a story I'm having to flip through you know other stories and then that it's making it worse because now I'm like well, wait a minute I want to read this story again too I think my other favorite story in the collection is called human development so I do recommend that this collection though and that it is a book that you read the whole thing because thematically and um, with the community that he's representing it ties together all right that's it on what I have read. Uh, I will be reading more short stories this week, and the next novel I'm going to start later today is The Trees by Percival Everett. I'm working on my booker reading still, and so I'm excited to start this book. I've heard so many good things about it. So I'll let you know what I think. That's it for now. 
You can let me know if you've read these short stories or anything else, or you know if you have uh, something uh, something I should definitely not miss in my shorty September. You can shout it out, and I'll try to find it. But I'm going to stop there for now. Have a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.